Hi, I'm here on site at Embedded World 2025, and joining me today is Artem Iginski, General Manager, General Microprocessors at Texas Instruments. We're going to be talking about Edge AI, TI's product portfolio, and how they're thinking about scalability and reusability. Artem, thank you for joining me. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Could you give us a quick introduction to yourself? Absolutely. So I'm Artem Iginski. I've been with TI now for a bit over 12 years. Uh, managing a lot of our general purpose microprocessors, most recently expanding that into Edge AI, which is obviously you know, the most innovative area uh, that's happening today. Mm -hmm. And could you quickly introduce Texas Instruments? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, that's uh, probably the hardest question you're going to ask me today. Texas Instruments, we do everything, right? From the smallest microcontroller that you can see in our booth to the largest ADAS, you know, automotive processors, down to the smallest multi-source analog, right? So, but really what TI is, you know, one word that defines TI is scalability, right? We're the one company that can solve all the problems that our customers need. And you touched on it just now, so I think it's definitely worth diving into it. Why is Edge AI such a big topic at the moment? Oh yeah, that's an interesting one. Well, there's two components to it, right? Hence the word, there's the edge and the AI. Why is AI important? Well, AI is helping us get faster at problem solving at the end of the day, right? Uh, it's bringing what we've always wanted to use machines for, make things solve faster and better. And that's where AI comes in, right? You can take learnings that a single person couldn't ever do because of the amount of data that needs to process, right? But where it becomes really interesting nowadays is the, actually the edge part. Because AI, it's been around for a while in different capacities. Edge was what's interesting, right? Now you want to process that data at the very edge where the sensing happens. And why do you want to do that? Well, one, there's privacy, right? A lot of times you want to control that data because now it can be very special to the use case or it could be because people are involved and we want to protect their privacy, right? That's one. But actually more interestingly now is the latency requirement, right? Because the decisions have to be made right there instantaneously because maybe it's a safe robot that has to stop because a person walked in front of it. Maybe it's a car where a child jumped in front of it to catch a ball and you have to stop immediately. So the latency is actually becoming incredibly important and that's really where the edge part comes in. We're doing all of our processing right there where the data is happening. Mm -hmm. And you briefly mentioned just now some examples of edge yeah. in action. Could you talk through some other real world applications that you've seen for edge AI? Oh yeah, that's an interesting one. Actually, I'll talk a little bit about a really cool demo that was showing in our booth, right? So typically today, when you hear Edge AI, you're thinking about camera vision, you know, you're thinking cars, you're thinking robots, but Edge AI can be anywhere there's data. And one of those applications is actually grid infrastructure, right? As we see more and more electrification happening, the grids are becoming more and more robust. A lot more electricity is flowing through them. But there's a big safety requirement to that, right? Electricity can be dangerous. And when we're transporting electricity, often you can get these arc faults happening where a whole explosion can happen instantaneously. But in reality, there's a lot of leading indicators on the power line that could prevent that from happening, make the grid safer. And what we're showing in our booth today is actually a microcontroller where we built a very tiny, it's actually called tiny, AI inside, right, that's able to detect the voltages, the uh, currents and all these components and actually figure out before the arc fault would happen and prevent it from happening. And that makes sure that the electricity can reach the home safely and make sure that the line workers can be safe, right, and overall improve the livelihood of all of us. And I suspect there'd be quite a bit of cost saving with that because oh, you're detecting absolutely. faults before they happen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can't put a price on a human life, so there is a whole lot of cost saving there. But even beyond that, right, AI is making things more efficient, right? And because what we do is scalability, we can scale it to the lowest cost point, to the most efficient cost point, and get you that scalability, right? So the end customer doesn't have to feel like, okay, AI has to have a, you know, a server to do it. You can buy a very small MCU and it will do AI for you. Mm -hmm. So why don't you walk us through some products in your Edge AI portfolio? Absolutely, so we have quite a few, right? Um, we have our vision focused AM6 family of products where we started out with AM6-2A, uh, which is our two tops uh, platform scaling all the way up to our 6-9A platform. That's a 32 tops engine, really focused on industrial applications. Um, so think about factory automation, grid automation, building automation, all of those kind of classical use cases. Um, but as 
I mentioned, we're now introducing new microcontrollers that incorporate this technology as well. So you really get that full scalability, but we're not stopping there, right? We're looking at our radar technology, our analog technology, right? Everywhere there's any kind of sensing happening, that AI technology can benefit it. So you spoke about scalability being TI's bread and butter, Absolutely. so to speak. How are you addressing challenges in AI when it comes to the scalability? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, the hardware matters, but the software matters even more, right? At the end of the day, our customers spend two to 10 times more of their R&D on software than hardware design. And that's really where we help them with scalability, right? TI focuses on providing not just the hardware, not just the SDKs and all the base software, but actually the ease of use tools, the examples, right? And the open source software that goes around it, so our customers can move faster, get a production faster, right? And just overall reduce the burden of the development cycle. Mm -hmm. So following on from that, AI processing has its own demands, especially when we look at battery life. How yeah. are you ensuring it's efficient so that for the battery powered applications, it, it doesn't drain? Yeah, that's a great question. That's really where TI differentiates in AI. If you look around, everybody's doing AI, right? So what does makes us special, right? Uh, it's actually very simple. We actually develop our own low power AI accelerators, right? So we don't brute force it with a standard ARM core or brute force it with compute. We actually create purposeful accelerators that are optimized for the use case, right? So when we talk about a microcontroller, right, we can talk about microwatts and microamps. When we talk about a processor, we're talking less than watts, right, to do this kind of processing. And that's unique because we developed the technology to address that rather than saying, okay, take a general purpose core and let's brute force it to do AI, right? That's our advantage. So following on from that, um, mm -hmm. I understand some of your edge AI processors integrate vision and deep learning accelerators. Yes. How does this impact applications like real-time image and video processing performance compared with perhaps traditional CPUs? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll circle right back around to what I was saying and why we call it edge, right? At the end of the day, the latency is the most critical piece of this. The decision has to happen in a very, very small split second after the data comes in, right? And so what we're able to do with the accelerators isn't just optimize the compute part of it, but actually the data flow itself and make sure that we can react to it quickly and efficiently, right? And when you do that faster and lower latency, you also save the energy, right? Because now you didn't spend 10 minutes processing, you split a split second processing, and that makes a huge difference. And given everything that we've just discussed, mm -hmm. how are you supporting developers who are testing at JI? What are, what are the kinds of services that you're yeah. offering? So that's actually a great question. We have on TI.com a developer's zone uh, where we actually provide web-based tools where they can actually deploy their models and test them on our EVM kits without having to purchase them. So we have you know, a repository of the kits that are accessible through the TI cloud, so you can visit it on dev.ti.com. Um, and you can actually start testing our AI technology without ever having to purchase a board or setting anything up. You click some buttons, you upload your files, and off you go. And that's something unique that TI is doing, right? We're trying to bridge that simplification and make AI accessible to anybody. Mm -hmm. Which I think is a, is a great mission. So thank you for that overview, Artem. Before we wrap up, could you tell us about your partnership with DigiKey? Oh, absolutely. I mean, DigiKey has been a critical partner for us. We love the accessibility, and we look forward to working together to expand the reach of AI and make everything better. Great. Well, thank you for taking thank the you. time. Thank you. Appreciate the time. Thank you.